Hello, my name's James Dyson. Hey guys, Matt from House of Back again, and uh, today I've got a uh, Dyson on the on the bench, and it is a DC41. This guy, they said the brush roll was not turning, so. Um, so we're gonna check that out and see what the issue is. So the first thing we're gonna do is give them a test run. The brush is most definitely not turning. So we're gonna start up here, split these two in half and take each as a separate piece um, and see what's going on. So let me flip this guy over. Now, if you guys have watched my DC41 video, put the link up here, pull this clip. And um, these are really prone to hair intrusion on the drive areas, but I don't see any hair. So, and I don't think that that's the issue. This is super free. We serviced this a couple years ago. Let's see when it was last in. Sticker says it was in April of 2020. It was due April of 2021. It's January of 2022 now. So it's been not quite two years, so. What we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and wiggle that off. Ooh, look at that. Is it clogged? Yes. Would this cause the nozzle not to run entirely? Probably not. This is a pretty loose clog, and I don't see that it was impacting the function of the brush up here. So while this would have prevented the vacuum from cleaning, most certainly this is not the cause of the short. So we kind of stumbled across another issue while we were in here. So the first thing that we're gonna do is we're going to check and make sure that there is continuity across across these two leads. Um, so we're just gonna go ahead and test this. So it's at zero right now. Yep. Good and steady continuity, so it's it's nice and steady. So the motor and whatnot in there is still, at least there's electricity getting across it. I'm not gonna vouch for its condition, but I can relatively safely say this is probably not the issue. So we're gonna go ahead and push that to the side for a sec. So what we got here is um, this is some, it looks like some uh, veneer off of a, you know, piece of wood furniture. This was up and in here. Would this have been enough to jam the brush roll? No, because it's like, it's super thin, super flexible. That's not going to jam anything. So again, even though we're finding plenty of debris up here, that's not the cause of our problems. All right, so the next thing that we're gonna to wanna to do is I'm gonna take the cup off, and just set him to the side. Um, gonna flip him over so the exhaust doesn't blow in my face. We have the brush roll switch in the on position. So that when we turn on the main switch over here, this guy right here, this will already be on and, you know, in theory, sending power down to the nozzle. So what we're going to do is we're going to check the contacts right here. So this is what sends power. This is the power takeoff for the, uh, for the nozzle and the brush. So we're going to check that and see if there is power coming through that when we tap into the mains. We're gonna switch this to auto ranging. Make <clears throat> sure that those leads are in there nice and solid. And now we're going to turn the machine on. All right, so as you can see on the, um, on the uh, multimeter, um, there, was no, there was no power coming in for the nozzle. So my suspicions were confirmed that what we're dealing with is something in the main unit. The next step, the motor has power 
getting down to it. Um, could it possibly be the power takeoff from the motors? Yeah, it could be, but more than likely what it is, is the switch. Torque screws right here, 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 and here. And then there's some clips as well that you have to remove to get down to it. That is the switch plate. So we've got the main power switch, and then we've also got the switch for, um, for the brush roll. This is just a really good example of how over-engineered Dysons really are. There are such simpler solutions to this um, that are more reliable, but God forbid you take that off and uh, that spring goes someplace because that sucks. All right, so now we are on the, um, we're looking at the, switches so we've got the main power switch right here okay and then we've got the reset switch right here which would um which will reset when you turn the machine on and off so this is kind of like a really <laughs> this is a really rinky dink way to do like a safety reset so if the machine pulls too much amperage it will pop this breaker and then when you go turn it off and then turn it back on again, it will reset the breaker automatically. It's, it's uh, not an elegant solution, but I guess it works. So the switch that we are concerned about is this one. First, we're going to test it in the off position. And there is no continuity. Now we're going to press that and see if... And that actually does have continuity. What we're dealing with is one of two things. Um, either that little actuator arm that I showed you where I was saying that the switch, the switch activator is over-engineered, maybe that fell out of place. So I'm gonna put it back together and see if I can get continuity through it. If not, what we're running into is the power takeoff down in the motor compartment that's burned out. So what there's gonna be is there's going to be leads coming off of the main power heading down and um, typically that is controlled by a circuit board and in this case that is not working so we're going to hope that it's the switch activator because if it's not the chances of that circuit board being available little to none like like not not a thing particularly now during uh during you know um during uh, all the shortages, right? We're in 2022, early 2022, and the world is just out of everything, especially electronics. So, um, and Dyson, even before that, was horrible about keeping those items in stock. Why am I assembling this before I do anything else? Because again, if the if I bump and lose that spring that's in the activator, it's just it's an absolute pain in the rear end. So we're going to avoid that altogether. this whole kickstand assembly and we put this down all sorts of stuff starts shifting around in here so you got the airways switching places um, and then obviously you've got the switch as well that will activate or deactivate um, we've got a needle through the hose which is a very common problem there we go so I want to stick myself in that. Trying to 
this GoPro out as kind of like a scouting camera. I don't know if you're going to be able to see, but down inside here, way down inside, yeah, right there. See that silverish piece right there, right down inside? Uh, don't have enough hands. Um, anyways, that is the activator for the micro switch. So I was just in there playing around with it by hand using my handy dandy pick and um, I'm not hearing it click at all when I push it down which it should be what we've got to do is um, got to take this guy off oh such a pain I hate taking these apart such a pain everywhere. Which we are looking for is still. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's right down here. So I'm still not far enough into this. To activate it by hand. So. take off another layer here. This is a really good, I'll just explain kind of a few things that are going on in here. The first is, this is your motor intake right here. This is all sealed by a gasket that goes between these two halves. But you're starting to see a pattern of behavior here in terms of the design. And that is that all of the, most of the air pathways are riddled with gaskets and halves that are put together. What does that ultimately mean? Well, as the machine ages and you get more flex, uh, you know, between the halves, as the plastic weakens, as the seals start to get squished, you'll begin using it and you'll start to see them come apart. And a lot of times people will have older Dysons and change the filters, they'll clean the cyclones, everything technically should be working great. 
but it still doesn't clean like it used to. And that is because it is just leaking air absolutely everywhere. Um, so some areas are more problematic than others, but um, it's, it's, it's common and it's because of the way that these things are designed. All right, so we're down in here. Here's the power takeoff for the, um, for the brush roll. We've got the circuit board here and then we've got that coming. Aha, here's our switch right here. Okay. So this is spring activated and you'll notice that nothing's happening, right? So there's a stop right here and there's a stop right here. And essentially, when this lets go, uh-oh, it's clicking guys. Can you hear that? If the switch is good, then it's gotta be this. It's gotta be that. Bummer. Well, we will find out. Sometimes switches can still click and they're bad, but not as often. So let's just peel back some of this rubber here. All right, multimeter. Multimeter, Matt. Okay, we're gonna switch it back to continuity. That is showing as, there you go. Switch is good. So, so at this point, <clears throat> the only other real thing that it could be would be the circuit board. Um, so that goes into the motor compartment, that goes there. These come in from over here. So these P, these two, these two are, <clears throat> these two are what sends power down to the brush roll. I'm just gonna check this length of wiring and make sure that that isn't bad. Um, chances are it's not, but we might as well exhaust all of our possibilities while we're in here. Um, this, this is screwed in. Okay, why am I doing this? I want to check the back side of this board if I can see it. See if anything's burned out. I don't see anything offhand that looks like it's burned out. That doesn't mean that one of these has not gone bad. Um, probably this dude. All right, so what we are going to do is pull that up. We're going to grab, oh man, where'd my leads go? Always good to have an alligator clip set of leads, but we're just going to use one side. And now this, if we put the multimeter in there, yeah, so those leads are fine. <clears throat> so the issue here is the circuit board. We're looking for a 21029 it looks like 
Um, so we are going to look this up and see what this is gonna cost to replace. Here's the story on this guy. This part is on back order. Um, so as I thought it would be. Um, that being said, uh, there are used ones available on, um, there are used ones available on eBay for, you know, you can get them for like 15 bucks. So the question is, is that worth it? Um, and I stumbled across while I was looking for the part on eBay uh, in one of my Google searches, I stumbled across a video by Becco uh, out of the UK and um, he had a DC 50, which is essentially it, it for all intents and purposes. It's like a very similar model to this with a different style PCB, but in the same spot with the same um, with the same capacitor. And it is uh, he put in a new circuit board and it blew the board immediately. Um, because there was some sort of electrical issue with the head, even though there was continuity. So, cause it ran for a second. Here's the thing about me. I'm a little bit different than a lot of other repair shops. I don't use used parts pretty much ever um, because of the fact that I can't guarantee them. I've had, I've been burned too many times putting in used parts and then three months later, something happens or in this case what if it, you know what if it's a week later something happens and it blows out the pcb well then i've spent a ton of time on a machine that i then have to refund the labor for right so it's not advantageous to me uh because i end up losing money on it and it's not advantageous to the customer because they end up wasting a ton of time on a vacuum that is just not worth fixing and I think that's where we're at with this guy. Now you might have a different opinion than me and that's okay. I completely understand that. Um, but I am really adamant about making sure that we do quality work that I can actually guarantee and that will work well for the customer because they deserve that and will work well for me and pay me because after I do labor on it, I deserve that. So just an update from post-production, Matt. Uh, I ended up contacting the customer who's also a friend of mine. I've worked on his vacuum several times and he decided to go ahead and throw in the towel on this vac. He ended up with a brand new SIBO X7 Premium Pet. So uh, he is a happy camper. So the story had a happy ending. Hello, my name's James Dyson, and I created a vacuum that's complicated as f Would you like to buy one of my complicated as f vacuums? Well, you should. I have a British accent. I do say I'm going to sell a lot of these to you fanboys in the colonies.